Have you been feeling a bit of pressure to buy an electric car recently? You're not alone. While it's certainly trendy and sustainable to opt for emissions-free driving, plenty of us still feel pretty daunted by all electric cars. So if that's you and you're feeling a mixture of EV excitement and EV anxiety, consider cars like these your new happy place. Plug-in hybrids are the solution for buyers who want electrification without being limited by range constraints. Combining a traditional engine with an electric motor and a battery that's externally charged by plugging into a power source. They're becoming increasingly popular with Aussie buyers, recording an almost 20% rise in sales in 2020. These are arguably two of the coolest plug-in hybrids available in Australia right now. The Mini Countryman Hybrid and the Volvo XC40 Recharge. Both are stylish city SUVs with price tags that kick off just above the $60,000 mark and around 46 kilometres of electric only range. The question is, which one of these will light your fire? Or should I say, charge your battery? Let's find out. The XC40 kicks off from $64,990 before on-road costs. But the model we're testing has some options fitted, bringing the total to $69,760 before on-road costs. Meanwhile, the Mini Countryman on test is the top tier signature grade, which starts at $66,200 before on-road costs. In terms of size, the XC40 is the slightly larger of the two cars, measuring 125mm longer, 88mm wider and 93mm taller than the Countryman. Alrighty, so we're in the front seat of the Volvo XC40 Recharge and straight away everything feels very premium but it's also very modern and minimalist. I really love this 9 inch vertical infotainment touchscreen which is quite unique and it looks fantastic. On top of that, I feel like I've got a lot of room in here. I've got nice headroom for a small SUV, good elbow room and great visibility all round. The panoramic sunroof makes things feel nice and bright too, which is handy. Plus you've got these leather seats which are super comfortable and they're heated and electronically adjustable. There's also good storage for a small SUV. You've got these huge door bins, some cup holders here and a few little trays for your knickknacks, which never goes astray. All the infotainment systems are really simple to use. It sort of feels like you're scrolling through an iPhone or an iPad. So if you use Apple products, it might feel a little bit familiar to you. On top of that, while there's no head up display, you've got a really clear premium digital driver's display, which has key information on it, including how much charge you have left on your battery, how much petrol you have left and how much range you have left too, which is obviously very important to know in a plug-in hybrid. And finally, there's all kinds of safety and driver assistance tech fitted to this car. You've got a parking assistant, which will reverse into parking spots for you. And you've got a 360 degree camera too, which is a $990 option, but it gives you a great all round clear view when you're parking and maneuvering. The Volvo XC40 is powered by a turbocharged 1.5 litre three-cylinder petrol engine and electric motor, paired to a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission that drives the front wheels only. Comparatively, the Mini Countryman pairs a 1.5 litre turbo petrol engine with a six-speed automatic transmission, mated to an electric motor and offering all-wheel drive. So in the front seat of the Mini Countryman Hybrid, everything just feels a little bit more fun and playful. You've got your Union Jack headrest, plus plenty of Union Jacks hidden around the cabin, so you can play Find the Union Jack if you want to. You've also got a nice suite of standard safety tech and driver assistance tech. And on top of that, you've got CarPlay. Unlike in the XC40, which also has CarPlay, this is wireless CarPlay, and it works really nicely. Connects your phone straight up the minute you get in the car. These leather seats are heated and very comfortable and electrically adjustable but the main difference in the Mini as opposed to the XC40 is you sit much closer to the ground so that gives you the advantage of having plenty of headroom I feel like I have lots of space and that's amplified by this dual sunroof here as well having that lower center of gravity gives the car a sportier racier feel while the Volvo's heated front seats are part of an optional climate pack the Mini's are standard both cars get a sunroof, wireless phone charging, power adjustable front seats and DAB digital radio as standard. Both cars also have Apple CarPlay, but Mini's version is wireless. So we're going to hit the road in the Mini Countryman Hybrid. I'm just setting off and I'm using the excellent rear vision camera here on the central display to just make sure that I'm not going to bump into anything. 
It's also got front and rear sensors as well in case you need it. So your seating position in the Mini is slightly lower to the ground than a regular SUV and that just makes you feel like you're really engaged with the road. On top of that, the steering is quite moderately weighted so you don't lose that go-kart feeling. However, when you do get going, it's very quiet because that electric powertrain is in full swing. So the Countryman offers you plenty of different ways to drive it depending on how much battery charge you have and how much petrol you have left in the tank. So there's a button down here called the E-Drive button and that offers you three distinct modes. There's the save battery mode, which obviously relies mostly on petrol power. There's the max E-Drive mode, which tries to rely when you have enough charge on mostly electric power. And finally, there's the auto E-Drive, which is somewhere in between and the car basically decides which kind of power it's going to use depending on how you're driving. Because the riding position is a little lower, visibility is actually great. You have a nice clear view of your surroundings. But I do wish that this rear vision mirror was a little bit bigger to take full advantage of what is a fairly sizable rear windshield for a smaller car. But other than that, you're going to be able to have a good view over everything and you can bump up this seat height if you like with the electric adjustment. So the Mini also features regenerative braking, which uses the friction from the slowing vehicle to charge the battery. And it will show you what it's doing on this driver display here. When it says that it's power, that means it's using battery. And when it says that it's charged, it means it's recouping some of that energy. So when you do really have to put your foot down and get ahead and the car switches to petrol power, that shift is almost imperceptible. It's a really clean, smooth handover and you really can't tell much of a difference apart from maybe a bit of engine noise. And although you do sit a little bit lower to the ground than you do in the XC40, the Countryman still feels like a really nice cushioned car in terms of its suspension. It's a smooth ride and it does feel much more protected from the road than your regular mini hatchbacks, obviously due to that raised ride height and slightly bigger body size. Additionally, it's a lovely quiet cabin. Obviously, you don't get as much engine noise as you would in a pure petrol car, but as well, it does a really nice job of blocking out the annoying sounds of the outside world. You've also got your different drive modes, obviously on top of the E-Drive modes, and those are sport, mid, and green, and they're exactly as they sound. Green optimizes fuel economy and efficiency, but sport obviously is a little bit more like the traditional minis that we know and love. It ups your performance factor and everything comes a little bit louder, and you've still got that nice weight to the steering. So it's a little bit sporty, a little bit go-karty, and a lot of fun. While max e-drive mode is ideal for around town driving because you won't use up that battery too quickly, it can actually take you up to speeds of over 100 kilometers an hour. So if you are fully charged and you really want to conserve that fuel tank, you can pop it into max e-drive and do some freeway driving and use the battery still. And while in some full electric cars, that regenerative braking feel is actually quite quite powerful and it feels like the minute you decelerate the car quite dramatically slows. In the Mini it's extremely seamless, you'll barely notice it and it will just work behind the scenes to conserve your battery life. Mini quotes 2.4 litres per 100 kilometres of fuel consumption on a combined cycle, but our test returned a real world figure of 5.8 litres per 100 kilometres. For comparison, the regular non-hybrid Countryman S quotes 6.7 litres per 100 kilometres. Okay, so I'm hitting the road for a quick drive in the XC40 Recharge, and straight away, this is a really easy, effortless car to drive. The steering is incredibly light, but the input is nice and direct, and so if you're maneuvering in really narrow city streets, it's kind of the perfect situation because you're going to be able to get where you need to go without too much effort. On top of that, it's a very quiet cabin. Obviously, it uses electric power, particularly at lower speeds, so the engine is very quiet, but overall, Overall, uh, much like in the Mini 2, you don't get too much road noise and very minimal tire noise as well. One of the things that is driving me a little bit crazy, and that may just be because I'm not quite used to it yet, is the gear stick, which actually requires you to cycle through the different gears to get to where you need to go. So if you start off in reverse, you have to pop it into neutral before you can get to drive, which is just a bit finicky and fiddly. 
Also on the gear stick is the B option you might notice, which if you're not familiar with that, that refers to regenerative braking, which is a setting on the car that uses friction from the slowing vehicle when you're decelerating to recharge or maintain some of the battery charge. So if you pop it into that mode, that just basically increases that effect, but it's still very subtle. So if you're used to the feeling on uh, electric cars where the car really dramatically slows when you decelerate, that's not the case in this car. You barely will notice it at all. The hybrid driving experience is really well integrated into Volvo's interface. So it's really easy to understand what's happening with your car. As you drive, the driver display will show you uh, how much charge and power you're using. It'll show you how much battery you have left and how much petrol you have left. And on top of that, it allows you to shift between driving modes depending on what your different needs are. And so the button down here allows you to shift through drive modes and you've got a few options. You've got hybrid, which is every day use which uses a combination of petrol and electric power you've got power mode which is for sporty driving and does tend to use a bit more of that engine power you've got pure which is eco drive which treats the car like a strictly full electric car and keeps things nice and quiet providing you have a fully charged or um, amply charged battery and finally you've got off-road so that's for rougher roads I've gone and shifted the car into power mode, which theoretically should use a little bit more of that petrol engine. And one thing I will say that's fantastic about the XC40 and also in the Mini is that the handover from electric to petrol power is really subtle. It's incredibly smooth. And probably a lot of the time you won't really notice it's happening unless you really put your foot down, which I think is great because you don't really want a car that's a little bit Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in that you can really sense what kind of power is being used. You want the whole thing to be a seamless integration experience which it is one thing I will say is that I do get a little bit of rollback in this car when I'm on steeper hills or stopped at traffic lights with a bit of a slope so that can be a little bit disconcerting and it's just something to get used to but overall it's a really easy car to drive it's very much get in and go it's quick it delivers power really efficiently and the transmission is incredibly smooth Volvo quotes 2.2 litres per 100 kilometres of fuel consumption on a combined cycle, but our test returned a real-world figure of 6 litres per 100 kilometres. Much like in The Countryman, this figure will vary greatly depending on how you use the car and how regularly you're able to charge. Some drivers will be able to run on full electric power most of the time. I'm pretty impressed with the Volvo XC40 Recharger's back seat and while you don't have quite enough room to fit three adults comfortably across, if you've got two fully grown adults in the back seat, they've got plenty of elbow room. As you can see, I've got the driver's seat in my regular driving position. I've got heaps of knee room and the headroom's good too. Plus with this sunroof extending all the way back, it feels nice and bright. On top of that, you've got your air vents here. You've also got seat heaters, which is a nice touch, some USB-C ports and some cup holders in this armrest here and you've got more storage as well so you've got door bins here and down by the seats there are little trays for more knickknacks if you have kids you'll just be able to squeeze two child seats back here and helpfully there are two iso fix ports on each of the outboard seats so in the back seat of the Mini Countryman, things are actually quite comparable to the XC40. As you can see, this rear bench sits a little bit higher than the front seats, which means you do lose a little bit of that headroom, but I still feel like I have plenty of room to move. I have great leg and knee room for something that's a bit of a smaller car. On top of that, there's lots of storage options. Like in the XC40, you've got huge door bins, although you are missing a central armrest. There are air vents down here for passengers, plus two USB-C ports in case they want to charge their phones. And there are ISO fix points on each of the outboard seats. At the tail end of things, the XC40 has the bigger boot, with 460 litres of available space and a space saver spare wheel under the floor. Meanwhile, the Countryman offers 405 litres of room with run flat tyres. Both cars have power tailgates, but the Volvos can be activated with a hands-free kick function and the rear seats can fold in both cars to improve your cargo carrying capacity. Now obviously a key part of the plug-in hybrid ownership experience is charging your car. So just how easy is it? Well, both of these cars come standard with a car to wall socket charging cable, meaning you can plug this end into your car's charge socket and this end into a regular power point at home and charge it up that way, which is probably what you'll spend the majority of your time doing. 
However, they are compatible with Type 2 chargers, which means you can use a public AC charger, just not a public DC fast charger. If you do want to use public AC chargers, you'll need a second cord with two ends that look like this at an additional cost. When plugging into charge, the maximum rate of charge the Mini can accept is 22 kilowatts, which is notably higher than the XC40, which can only take 3.7 kilowatts. This means the Mini is better suited to public AC chargers than the Volvo, which is best suited to home wall sockets. Now, one key advantage the Mini has over the Volvo is the Mini Connected Phone app, which essentially allows you to monitor the charging process remotely. This is really handy for if you want to plug in and check the car is actually charging, or for if you want to go and grab a coffee and wait until it's fully charged before you return to your car. There's also a really handy e-drive section, which tells you how efficiently you've been driving and also summarizes your battery consumption. Volvo offers a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty on the XC40 and servicing is the same price as the regular XC40, $1,595 for three years or 45,000 kilometres of coverage. Mini's warranty is shorter at three years with unlimited kilometres and scheduled servicing is available for five years or 80,000 kilometres at either $1,595 for basic cover or $4,155 for plus cover. Both cars boast a 5-star ANCAP safety rating, Mini's from 2017 and Volvo's from 2018, and a comprehensive list of safety tech as standard. The thing about both of these cars is they do an excellent job of remaining true to their roots. The Countryman is a great Mini and the XC40 is a great Volvo. They both feel familiar and functional but with a premium edge and they nail the brief of being city-friendly SUVs and effective plug-in hybrids. They also both have their unique merits. The Volvo is more obviously luxurious in the cabin with really helpful information about the electric driving side of things, an effortless on-road feel with super light steering and plenty of driver assistance and a bit more cabin room and boot space. Meanwhile, the Mini is funkier with excellent app integration to manage your charging, a battery that's able to accept a higher rate of charge, a racier behind the wheel feel and a slightly lower price point with more standard inclusions. To be honest, you don't need us to tell you which one of these cars to buy because one look at either of them and you'll know where your heart lies. If you're still not sold on the powertrain, the biggest perk of a plug-in hybrid is that you can enjoy predominantly electric driving around town with great fuel economy, but you don't need to worry about range and charging if you venture further afield. The perfect example of having your cake and eating it too. Thanks for watching. To enjoy more new car content like this, head to caradvice.com.au and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're notified every time a new video goes live.